to discuss Senator, Senator Alex Padilla, Democrat from California. He sits on the Environment and Public Works Committee. Senator, thank you for taking the time this morning. Uh, good to be back, Jim. Good to see you. You are among uh, 200 congressional, uh, well, you signed a letter as well as other congressional staffers urging President Biden to declare a climate emergency. Can you explain to our viewers what that would allow the president to do exactly? Uh, sure, and I appreciate the opportunity. And, and first, let's uh, set the context. You already did mm -hmm. half of it, which is calling out not just wildfires in California, other parts of the West, but the flooding in St. Louis, extreme weather events throughout the country and frankly, around the world. Uh, but uh, we also have to remind folks of why we're going, why we're turning to the president. That's because our Republican colleagues in the Senate, men who continue to uh, uh, disregard the science uh, yeah. or, or fail to act yeah. legislatively to address the climate challenge, uh, have a, that's there's no choice but to turn to executive action. And we do believe President Biden has uh, the ability to declare an emergency and use the powers that an emergency declaration uh, provides uh, to help take bold action on climate because time is of the essence. You know, we talked about uh, uh, the Defense Production Act, for example, in the earlier days of the COVID-19 pandemic, leveraging our manufacturing capability in the country to produce ventilators, other things to counter the pandemic. Well, the same can be uh, the same as the case when it comes to tackling climate. Let's boost the supply chain to produce things like the, the, the solar power infrastructure, the wind power infrastructure, the renewable energy that we need to keep electricity, keep the economy going, but wean ourselves off of fossil fuels and the emissions that they cause. You uh, are uh, working on legislation that you've introduced to establish federal protections for workers against heat stress. Uh, do you have 60 votes in the Senate to get this passed? Uh, we're working our way. First step is to introduce the bill. The second step is to start uh, lining up support. But again, as, you know, as we speak, there's 85 million Americans who are living in areas with heat warnings. Last week, the number was 100 million. And the United States, again, clearly not alone in this. You look at what's happening in Europe. You look at what's happening in India. And it's not just uh, people who can escape maybe to air-conditioned offices. Think about folks who work in agricultural fields, who work on construction sites, who work in warehouses where there may not be ventilation or air conditioning. Uh, extreme heat is the leading cause of death uh, in, in for many. And so... Uh, States like California have a state standard to protect workers from heat, from the excessive temperatures, access to shade, access to cold drinking water, those sorts of things that can save lives literally. But we need a national standard. A federal standard is long overdue. We do have the support of the administration on this, but we also know that uh, the regulation setting process can take years and years and years. The climate crisis is only getting worse by the year, but we can't afford to wait. Senator, to politics now, midterms coming up. Uh, it's it CNN's reporting that some Democrats are plan planning uh, as part of a push to uh, limit their losses in the midterms to, to paint Republicans as extremists. I wonder, because at the same time, you have uh, Democratic groups backing some of those same extremist Republican candidates, candidates, election deniers, for instance, in a state like Maryland. Does that work for you? I is that not fundamentally contradictory? Yeah. The uh, look. The bottom line is making a clear contrast for voters to decide this November who to vote for. Uh, we know what the nation needs. We need uh, investments in uh, job creation domestically. We need to tackle costs for working families. How do we bring down the cost for prescription drugs? How do we bring down the cost of child care? How do we bring down uh, the cost of the various areas where we're facing inflation? Democrats have plans that have been stifled because of Republican opposition in Congress. So let's make that abundantly clear for voters. You want to restore a woman's right to choose? Vote for Democrats. You want to tackle climate aggressively? Vote for Democrats. It's creating that I, contrast uh, that I think is going to uh, continue to bolster uh, our I chances in November. I, I get that point. But, but part of the Democratic case here, you hear it from senior Democratic leaders, Nancy Pelosi among them, is that some of these Republican candidates and Trump himself are a threat to democracy. How can Democrats say that but then back some of those election deniers in their own races. Yeah, look, the, it's going to be up to, to candidates across the board uh, to pose those questions uh, for Republican candidates to answer. Do you believe climate uh, change is real 
or not? Do you believe a woman should be able to make the decisions uh, on her own body or not? Be public, be on the record, and let the voters decide. Senator Alex Padilla of California, nice to have you back on the program. Thank you, Jim.